Okay, so <clears throat> sorry. So we'll go over the uh, topic. We'll continue on the blood types, which is based on the book. And there are two main books on this topic. Uh, in case you want to uh, get more uh, into a particular blood type that you are. Uh, so why we even talk about this? We talk about it from the health perspective. Uh, we are talking because not to donate or receive blood, which is typically the main purpose when we uh, find out what blood type we are, but for our health, for long-term benefit. Uh, not that we want uh, weight management like going to the gym, but weight management in the sense, what makes sense as for our blood type that we should eat, uh, even the physical activity, exercise, that perspective, how we can have our lifestyle that helps us in having a better memory, less stress, because stress is something which in today's world, everybody's complaining about, right? Whether you're a child, whether you're a school going, college, university, or professional. And again, having a longer life lifespan without health is no good. So you want a longer lifespan, but with health. Throughout the world, if we see, we see a very high percentage of people having blood type O. Uh, if we don't worry about the RH factor, whether plus or negative, it's roughly 45%. Uh, if you look at type A, which is the second most popular one, uh, then you will see it's roughly 33%, followed by B type, which is roughly 16, and type AB, which is under six. Now we may wonder why such a big difference, and that is uh, one factor is the distinction you see between these types in their digestive capabilities or factors and immune system, the type they have and what they have. Sorry, I think went the other way. Now, why the difference is in two critical factor, digestion and immune system, and why the percentage vary accordingly is hidden in when they really came into existence. So O was the primary blood type when the life started in terms of humans. Uh, that was in the continent of Africa roughly 40,000 years ago. So the everybody was having O. So this was very simple at that time. The life was, again, simple in the terms, save your life. That was the first challenge from wild animals, from all kinds of situations. Lifespan was not long because of a lot of danger or health issues, diseases. And from Africa, as the humans started migrating to Asian region, blood type A came into existence roughly 15 to 25,000 years ago. From there, they migrated towards north, means they went to Himalayas and uh, you know northern region, colder region. So they were from warm, they were going to cold region, and that was about in That's when type B came into existence. AB is relatively new, less than thousand years, so just five to seven hundred years roughly, because of again a lot of uh, you can see in the thousand years, last thousand years, a lot of war. A lot of, you know, people or kingdoms trying to expand those kind of situation. So it is much older. It is much deeper than sometimes we try to distinguish, we try to uh, define people based on their color of the skin, their religion, ethnic practices. But actually our blood type is much, much older. So it has a lot more information than just, you know, some generations. So you can imagine how many generations have taken place in the last 40,000 years, right? Basically our entire history is there. Now type O 
as we said at that time, it was primarily meat eater because they will do hunting to survive. Yes, they were having some vegetables or fruits, but primarily meat eaters. Type A came when a big change happened, and the change was agriculture. This was the time when uh, human learned how to, you know, grow crops and food was readily available rather than, you know, just hunt and eat. As they moved to the colder climate, a lot of changes took place and that's why the type B has some differences. And type AB is a kind of combination between A and type B. So a single drop of blood you will see is not just red fluid with some enzymes or proteins or this or that trying to transfer from one part of the body to other. It is actually carrying our blueprint. It has lots of information that we haven't understood yet. Lots of information passing between generations the immune system, all of the system, there is a lot of dependency on what blood type you are. So it is kind of, uh, you know, a database that can answer a lot of things if we understand it properly. And that's the whole thing. Because you can see billions of people are there for one particular blood type. That does not mean all those um, billions of people say O type or A type will have everything identical, no. And we'll see that. However, there are similarities. There are trend that we can use that information and improve our health, well-being. So immune system, the term came from a Latin city immunis, which was exempted from paying taxes. And that's why they started using this term immune for the immune system, what we call today, because it is protecting us. So you want something, you know, uh, which is uh, as powerful as, at least in status. And antibodies are like private army. Any foreign particle, foreign issue comes, then these go and they get attached to that particular particle. And the idea is, <clears throat> sorry, from a smaller particle, when they get glued, they get attached, they makes it big, and it's easy for the body to dispose it off. Now, there are two key things. Uh, one was antibodies and what we just saw and also antigens, antigens like blood type is an antigen. So when we are talking about this, you can see in the category, all four have some differences, uh, either in antigen or antibodies. Antigens are outside on the surface. Antibodies are inside the blood cell. And this is important when you are receiving or donating blood because you can see type A has anti B antibodies. That means you cannot donate type A blood to a type B person. It would be very harmful. Similarly, the other way around, you cannot take the blood from type B person and transfuse or give or donate to blood type A. But because there is no antibodies in AB, AB is a universal receiver. You can receive from either A or B, it doesn't matter. Type O has no antigens, so it can donate to anyone. That's why it is called universal donor. So this information, yes, is useful, but our intention is health perspective. So if we understand, first of all, you have to know your blood type. And then you can see different type of food may react or affect different people differently based on their blood type. It's not that four people of four different blood type, they will have absolute same result by eating the same thing. In some cases, yes, it may be, but food, there's a big list how it affects 
based on your blood type. So it's important to know so that you can make your choice. Because there is a chemical reaction taking place between your blood and the food you eat. Now it is based on genetics, what we call, which is blood type, which is, you know, all those details comes into place. If we understand this, we can really help ourselves because you can avoid something that is not good for you. Now, lactins is one thing which uh, I know in the past we did talk about, but more information is needed. More people need to understand because it is not known yet in the um, in a big way. People understand, oh, I have gluten allergy. Gluten is one type of lactin, but they know that as allergic thing rather than as a lactin. Tomatoes, nightshade family like, you know, capsicums, eggplant, wheat, uh, even rice, they all have lactins. Lactins are there for plant protection, but it affects us negatively. There's a proper way of cooking lentils, rice, you neutralize the lactins, but if you don't, then it can impact you. So the functioning is similar like the bacteria virus, you know, they just come, they attach, and similarly, the lactins work because ultimately the role is to protect. Now, when we look at the blood type, plan, there are five elements, the diet, weight loss factor, supplements means which supplements one should eat, depending on your blood type, what type of exercise, item four, and personality question means it does impact your personality. Each category, there are three ways we can look at it. Highly beneficial means you should have more. Neutral means, okay, it was you know, like food do you, you need, but there are items which you should avoid. They are against you in the sense they will hurt you. Based on these categories, you can decide, this is my blood type, this is what I will eat more, this is what I will eat less, or I will not eat at all. And by making this simple choice, you can improve your health. So when we look at the diet, so what it is doing is, it is really bringing you back with nature, the universe, you know, your normal rhythm, because that's where your energy meets, right? Now, now you have a lot of choices. Uh, as we said about, you know, 10,000 years, more than 10,000 years ago when human learn how to, you know, grow crops, agriculture part. Now they have much more food options because they can grow food and they can store food. No more that you hunt and eat right away. 40,000 years ago, no question of any refrigerator or anything. You kill, you eat, you cannot eat, it's gone waste. You don't get anything, you don't eat. So a lot of changes took place, but does one diet fit all? And that's what we'll see, no? Blood type will explain you because sometime, you know, every now and then flavor of the month, some you will see for six months, one year or two years, there will be a big push. Oh, keto diet, oh, this diet, oh, that diet. But people are different. Different blood type means, can it really function the same way? No. So again, there's a big list in the diet, 14 items. Now, they have some additional item as non-vegetarian, but we don't worry about them. We know that vegetarian food has more nutrient than we need, so why bother? But every category in the book, you will see three elements. What is good for you, eat more, what is okay, and what you should avoid. So based on your blood type, it's not that you won't get anything to eat. No, you just have certain elements, certain food items to avoid based on your blood type. So depending on your blood type, if you're interested, go in the book, go in the detail and find out what 
and you can make a small chart. It's not that complicated. It sounds, it looks, but once you make your chart, keep changing, keep, you know, have variety based on the season. And we always say eat locally because seasonally and regionally is really important. So when you eat local stuff grown in your region, it really helps. And season because sometimes you get food from cold storage. Yeah. I mean, you can feel it tastes different. It's there. It looks same, but it really is not same. So similarly for weight loss, again, it's not a question of, okay, I'm not getting time to go to gym. What can I do? Not that. But weight loss in the sense, optimization. What you should eat, what is the best for you? And if you can eat what is good for you, you can identify by eating this, I'm gaining weight. By eating this, I'm losing weight. So based on your situation and condition, you can pick what to eat or what to eat more and what to eat less. You know, in today's world, there's a big list of supplements. Anyone you talk to or you go to doctor and everyone will be suggesting, oh, start taking this, you know, B series or vitamin D, vitamin A, and, you know, all kind of magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, you know, all names in the market. But why? And does all blood type works the same? Answer, maybe no. So again, understand what is more appropriate for you and then play around, have, have some experiment, have some you know, data to find out what really is needed for you and what works for you. Rather than going for allopathy and all that, you know, just figure it out and make your system stronger by having those supplements. Like I'll give you one example before we talk about exercise. People think eat more protein if you want to gain weight or if you want muscles and all. More protein means more muscle. This is a normal perception. Average person over, like in your diet, you are taking, your input is exceeding the requirement of your protein level. That means, you have excess protein. What happens when you take excess protein? You have to discharge it. You have to get rid of it from your body. Anything which is in excess is poison to you. So what will happen? The body is spending energy to get rid of that excess protein. You're making your you know, body work harder, your liver and kidney and whatnot, you know, processing that extra, whatever supplements, or supplements that you cannot digest or cannot absorb. So our body should be in a state where we can absorb these supplements first naturally. Yes, certain times you may have to take certain one, okay, but not like you think your life is depending on these external supplements. Why? Our body is designed to extract supplements. We should eat variety of food. Don't just take two, three items and say, every day of the week, 12 months of the year, I just eat these two, three items. Even if they are very healthy, super food, you don't get the variety of nutrients. Then you can be in trouble, yes. So exercise, yes, you will see how different blood type may require different type of exercises. So when we say, you know, everybody to do the same exercise, same regime to follow, no. It may not be the right thing to do. And then come personal education. You will see that in the following sessions, how your blood type impacts your personality, your attitude, your behavior. Sorry, there's a typo, I'll fix it. So this is again also impacted by our blood type. So, Masters, this was session three. We will continue next week. Uh,